Blessed are those who live out their dreams. That's the difference between listening to the knock on the door and going and answering. God, that was great. <laughs> What a glorious place to be. How do you describe yourself to people? Super nerdy rock climber. Just trying to figure out how to never grow up, really. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. How do other people describe you? Like if they're going to write an article, they say Tommy Caldwell. Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs>
Ooh. Yeah. Jesus. This is intense. And the problem is, no matter how well you guys film, you're not gonna capture how ridiculous this is. This is, this is a whole nother level of crazy. The kind of climbs I do are inherently quite risky, but I think the moments in my life where I've been close to death are some of the most powerful. They tend to change you the most. It was a terrifying experience for four American rock climbers. This group was taken hostage by Islamic militants in Central Asia. They were held at gunpoint for six days, little food, no water, and freezing cold temperatures at 13,000 feet. Caldwell says when they were held captive, the conditions were horrible. My first big international climbing expedition when I was 21 years old was to southwest Kyrgyzstan, this remote, beautiful climbing valley that was very similar to Yosemite, but you know, in Central Asia. Came into that trip as like this little kid and I kind of came out of it really messed up for a while, but it really was this coming of age moment. About a week into our climbing trip, a rebel group called the Islamic Movement of Uzbekistan moved into the valley and the Kyrgyz military showed up to fight and ended up just kind of colliding right on top of us. And we were taken hostage by the Islamic Movement. During the six-day period, our, that rebel group got kind of picked off one by one by the Kyrgyz military, and we were left with just one remaining captor. To me, it was just so obvious this was our chance to escape, and we ended up climbing up this big, steep mountainside through the night. I remember scrambling really quietly across this rocky ledge behind our captor. I remember reaching out, grabbing his gun strap that was strapped over his shoulder. I remember pulling him off. I remember him falling like 50 feet, hitting this ledge, and then just like bouncing out of sight into the blackness and just laying down and putting my head in my hands and just kind of breaking down and being like, what did I just do? Within six months after that experience, I was living every day to its fullest. I was like, we lived through this experience and I felt empowered in this way. So for me, it was like this incredible life driving force, really. About three or four months afterwards, a reporter actually discovered that he survived the fall and he was taken captive by the Kyrgyz military and was in jail. People around me that describe that time in my life when I found that out, they say I came to life again. Although I don't really remember it that way. I just remembered I had it within me to actually take a life. It's one of those things that's is just too much to absorb. I view my life really as everything that led up to Kyrgyzstan and then everything since. Like it had this ripple effect. I think it really led to everything I've done since. I think Yosemite is the place that made me totally fall in love with being outside. When I'm home and I'm reminiscing about kind of the most magical periods of my life, they're almost all spent here in Yosemite. And it's where I've learned to love the outdoors. It's where I've fallen in love with my wife. It's where I came with my family. Even though I'm not from California, it's like where my heart is. Nice work. Tommy. Yeah! Do you want to climb out? Do you want to do this? Me? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But, but you're going to believe me. Me? No, Tommy. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Not that I, Blake. If Tommy can blame me, I'm going to take Tommy and blame me. I mean, it's like, you know, I... There's not enough to All right. It's like none of tea in China, he said. <laughs> 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 Beautiful. Yeah, so we're thinking about actually going down a pitch so we could rappel down, and then we'd both go down, and we'd bring all of our gear and stuff, and then we'd climb out just like you would on a normal pitch. I'd lead it, and then you would follow behind me and clean the gear. It's yeah, just like it I'm could take a do while. It. What's the Jumar? Just tell me, like, where do we practice the Jumar? On a ledge? Yeah, let's, let's actually just practice that really quick right here. When you have to Jumar, all you have to do is unclip these from your harness, put them on the rope, and then you're like good to go. Jumar up a little bit. Got it. Go Clip straight into a bolt. Take the Jumars off. 
Instagram. Pull, so clip, pull off a, uh, a quick draw from my belt. Have you ever thought about maybe your first attempt going off the side of your house? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Instead of a 3,000 feet? <laughs> There's a lot of questions about the equipment. <laughs> Yeah, usually the way we do this is we'd actually find a place to like mount the rope vertically yeah, and practice yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you know, it seems up. reasonable. Yeah. You know? yeah. But it never works that way. Like, <laughs> my first humor oh, no. was here and go. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. You got this. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And then what do I want to do? And then put your hand here and then slowly just bring your feet over the edge. There you go. Yep. Now, okay, everything's good. Yep. I want to start rappelling a little bit. Go for it. Okay. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Have fun. Yeah. Doing it big time. Woo! Oh, my God. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. Did I think he was going to die? <laughs> yes. Was I confident that I was telling him that he wasn't going to die? Yes. <laughs> There's still that little bit that, like, maybe I might kill a major rock star celebrity. <laughs> yeah, there was that scariness. <laughs> but I think he's good. Yeah. Nice. Woo! It might be easier if you do mine on this rope, and I'll do mine on the blue one. Boom, just like that. No problem. Woo! Yeah. Beast. OK, I'm off the ledge, Jared. I'm getting into it now. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's pretty bold. Yeah, totally. A good place to learn how to juba, for sure. Right at the top of the cliff. So you're going to stop right there, and we're going to throw down the end of the rope, and I'm going to belay you over this last little bit, and you're just going to climb. OK. OK. You're doing great, man. You're going to be such a good climber. Uh, I'll just really glad to see you. I mean. OK. Uh, faith is. Faith is. <laughs> faith is a good figure eight knot. <laughs> Pretty Coming standard. off like that without knowing anything yeah. <laughs> and just being completely ignorant. Yeah, you have to just trust us that we like set it up for you. Yeah, right? and I don't so. even fucking know you, Tommy. <laughs> I know, totally. uh, so, you know, you're a fucking nice guy, but really at the end of the day. I've only killed one person so far. I know. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Your odds are pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So I'll just grab the other end of this blue rope here. OK, good. Oh. And then just like mantle up over. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Nice. Oh. Oh. Okay. Boom. I'm tied into a lot of gear right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my god. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Uh. You can just sit on that ledge. Oh, and turn fuck around. yeah. Yeah, dude. Oh, fuck hard. yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, that was awesome. <laughs> That was fun. Yeah. It was really the swing down that got me, I gotta <laughs> say, from the beginning. Yeah, you the see, he was the belly, okay. he like twisted around. I was like, oh, I wonder how I feel like that. Yeah, that was but. good exposure. <laughs> but I felt pretty good otherwise. And once I got into it, once I moved and got into working, it was great. I mean, felt fine, felt focused. Cool. Yeah, you look great. I mean, you just, you know, you look at the rock and the thing, even looking down and the exposure, and now it doesn't obviously feel the same. Although I'm not, I'm not ready to swing out again right now. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> <laughs>